And next week, millions of families in Chicago and across the nation will get a much needed economic boost. The child tax credit. 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 Starts next Thursday. ABC 7's Leah Hope talked to parents today thankful for the help after losing their jobs during the pandemic. A visit to a free Chicago Park District splash park on a hot day is the perfect activity for Shauna Schumer's kids. The nanny who wasn't able to work during the pandemic is happy to hear of some financial relief coming her way. I hope it helps a lot of families to just get back on their feet where they need to be or just help pay bills that are past due. In Sacramento County alone, more than 300,000 kids could soon be living better lives thanks to a helping hand from the federal government. That's the number of kids who may benefit from the new child tax credit payments if their parents sign up. Members of the Sacramento Poor People's Campaign and the South Oak Park Community Association teaming up this morning in Jack Davis Park to get the word out and educate families about this help. Of all the things we do in Washington, here is something where real families see real money that they're struggling to get by with. Money that they can use to pay rent, utilities, and what we will do in the remaining six months of this calendar year is to cut the child poverty level in America in half. In half! Jason Claybron had to stay with his sister with his twins when his construction job dried up last year. Right now, with this, I could probably, right now, I'm moving on the way so I can get back in my own place, get my own kids, their own beds, so and I ain't got to sleep on no couch or be sleep on no floor. While the payments are supposed to end after December, advocates like those from Economic Security for Illinois are trying to get the payments extended and to make sure they include undocumented immigrants with children. The goal is to get the word out to those families to help them understand this is kind of like free money. If you have child, if you have children under the age of 17, you can take advantage of this. You may be able to get at least $300 a month per child. So just think if you have one or two or three children, how much more that's going to benefit your budget. An extra $300 a month makes a big difference to a family who is struggling to put food on the table and to really pay bills and, and just live. And officials say the expanded child tax credit will bring more than $435 million to Maine families. That's $3,600 more per year per child into the hands of nearly every family with children. For children, it's not just about, like, they don't care about bills that need to be paid. They want to have fun, and that's what they deserve. Genesis Apia says her six-year-old daughter wants to go to the beach and Chuck E. Cheese, but she's having trouble making ends meet. And that's where the new child tax credit could make a difference. This will still be a great help to my family. Eligible families should start receiving money for the child tax credit July 15th, up to $1,800 in cash through December, and another $1,800 claimed on 2021 tax returns. Any of our families could use the additional money to pay for food, diapers, and other necessities. Advocates, nonprofits, and parents gathered in Atlanta Central Park Thursday to say the child tax credit will be so helpful, it should be permanent. If they are made permanent, they can foster economic opportunity and improved health and educational outcomes for our children as well as generations to come. Expanding the child tax credit is part of President Biden's American Families Plan. The plan also calls for more money per child. It's a move that Pia hopes Congress will consider. Making this benefit permanent could really have our culture move in an upward trajectory and maybe possibly even eliminate the future poverty and we won't need this in the future. Today, some local nonpartisan organizations got together to hold a news conference. It is aimed at bringing awareness and advocating for the continuation of those child tax credit payments, which they say will bring a lot of people out of poverty. Advocates say the plan could actually cut child poverty in America in half. Now, to qualify, you have to file your 2019 or 2020 taxes and meet those income requirements. The IRS is handling the payments.
Hi, I'm Natalie Foster, president of Economic Security Project. Who are you? You know. <laughs> and this is Nico. Uh, my name is Adisu Demissi. I'm senior advisor to Building Back Together. And on behalf of Economic Security Project and BBT and the 30 groups that are co-sponsoring and co-hosting this event today, we want to welcome you to today's celebration. We're so glad that you've tuned in. We've put together a program to celebrate the child tax credit a key part of the American Rescue Plan that Joe Biden passed earlier this year. We'll dance, we'll sing, and we'll hear from some of the most inspired folks of our time. And we're gonna celebrate the first checks hitting parents' bank accounts today. And wait, Juno, who are you excited to hear from? Come to house. <laughs> Me too, Juno. So settle in, tag a parent in the comments on Facebook. And if you're a parent yourself, be sure to let us know what you'll do with your check. I'm pleased now to introduce the visionary leader, Reverend William Barber, the chair of the Poor People's Campaign, to start us off. Gracious and eternal God, you have called us to recognize that children are a gift and families are precious and the poor must be lifted over and over and over and over in your in the scriptures you declare that a nation will be judged by how it treats that nation treats the least of these you tell us in your word that we are to cry loud and spare not that we are to welcome the poor that we are to change policies that lift us away from greed and grant us policies of grace over half of our children in this country, oh Lord, live in poverty and it does not have to be. You have taught us in your word, in all faith traditions, that poverty is a result of policy choices and the inhumanity of humans toward one another. Loose us from this sin, loose us from this breakage and brokenness Give us the strength, the courage, the wisdom, the fortitude to do what is right. We thank you for this effort toward child poverty. Let us know we cannot stop here. It cannot be merely temporary. Help us, oh God, to move in such a way that people have living wages and health care. The people have the kind of protection from the environment that we break the bondages of racism and classism. Our children deserve it. They deserve a better world. They deserve a chance. Teach us God that the ultimate question for a nation when it wants to know what its health is like is how are the children? Help us, oh God, in this country to lift both children and parents. Help us to be repairers of the breach. Help us to be the beloved community in all of our policies, in all of our efforts. We pray this in the powerful name of the one that created all that is and called us to love one another. In that name we pray, amen. Amen and Ashe, thank you, Reverend Barber, for reminding us that we do have the power and the ethical and moral responsibility to create a world without poverty. Welcome to everyone who is joining us today. I'm Melissa Harris-Perry. And I'm Dorian Warren. Melissa and I are your co-hosts today as we celebrate together the first checks and direct deposits hitting parents' bank accounts as part of the expanded child tax credit. Today is, to quote our then Vice President Biden speaking to President Obama during the public announcement of passing the Affordable Care Act, quote, this is an effing big deal. And it is, it really is a seriously big deal. And it, I gotta say, it's felt like a long time since we've had something to like downright celebrate, like not just holding the line on losing something, but actually moving the ball forward. So today, as we mark the initiation of the child tax credit, 
three little words, child tax credit, but they stand for a big victory. And Dorian, I just want to say, it's always my pleasure to have this opportunity to watch you and so many other grassroots activists, organizations at national, state, and local level who have really done the work to make this moment possible for families. Indeed, and thanks, Melissa, for that. This moment is decades in the making, starting all the way back, yes, in 1997 with a $400 per child credit per year. Years of grassroots organizing and policy advocacy expanded in 2001 and 2003. Mm -hmm. But as we gather here today, parents will now receive from $3,000 to $3,600 a year per child. And that's a really big deal, Melissa. And by the way, it'll be monthly, not just once a year at tax time. Listen, Dorian, I know that with you and me, a celebration like this can turn into a party real fast. I even have my Tribe Called Quest album ready. So if we're really about to party in a bit, but I'm thinking before we get to all of that, let's do a little bit of work because we have a lineup of amazing change makers today, including Secretary Hillary Clinton, our new Senator from Georgia, the Reverend Raphael Warnock, and yes, you heard it, Vice President Kamala Harris. So you do not want to miss any of that. So stay right here. And with that, Melissa, let's get started. Because up first, two of our dear friends, trusted co-conspirators and fellow good troublemakers, Rashad Robinson, President of Color of Change, and Michael Tubbs, Co-Chair of Mayors for Guaranteed Income. Rashad, I am just through the moon and incredibly excited. Um, first, as a father of a 20-month-old and another one on the way to see sort of the government realizing that parenting is work and that child poverty is, at, is abhorrent and we, and we shouldn't have it. The 10% increase in incomes, the fact that it's monthly, the fact that it's coming directly to families really shows how folks deliver. And I know you've been doing a lot of organizing in, in this space around racial justice and around sort of getting people excited about politics. So I'm sure you must be just as excited as I am. Well, I'm excited. First of all, it's great seeing you, brother, and congratulations on the family. I love, I love uh, seeing you all on social and, and, <laughs> and good luck as you as you expand it. And I think that that is why I think this conversation is so important, right? As um, as we are coming out of a global pandemic, as we are dealing with the impacts of all the ways in which our economy was damaged, and we are recognizing that that going back to how things were before um, is not actually a solution that will help anyone that far too often we tell stories about inequality that are unfortunate, that make inequality almost seem like a car accident rather than mm. it was unjust, right? And so we tell these stories that make it seem like it just happened, not that it's manufactured mm. and it hasn't been manufactured by a set of choices. And what we have to do here and what this is an opportunity is to manufacture some equality, to manufacture some justice, to manufacture some opportunity. And that's why I think this is so important and as families um, who are, are struggling or who are just looking for a leg up or looking for um, a way to sort of um, take that great idea or, or provide for their children, hopefully this um, credit will allow people to expand their possibilities. Um, and I think that is so, so exciting. And what's exciting for me is that it's basically a guaranteed income for families. Four years ago when I was still married, I piloted a guaranteed income. People were saying this would never happen in America. And again, thanks to President, Vice President, the Democrat major, Democratic majority, we now have a guaranteed income for parents. It's a great first step. And as I know you from the folks you work with and organize with, and, and I know from the folks I used to serve, just how much the extra 250, 300 will mean all the difference between childcare, transportation, recovering from the impacts of this pandemic. And there's something you said earlier that really struck me about how. This isn't like someone giving us something, but that's some sweat equity went into this. Well, I think that that is so important, right? I think about last summer and all of the ways in which in the middle of a global pandemic, when many people thought the best we could do was clap outside of our windows or uplift investigative journalism, racial justice got people to the streets, powered people to the polls, right? The, the upticks in turnout um, that, that powered um, folks' participation 
we know what racial justice can do for an election. Mm. And now we have to do the work to show what an election can do for racial justice. And that what and that is essentially what this policy is about. This policy is about making good on the commitments that people made at the polls, um, making good on what is owed to people who participate and engage, and also dealing with the long-term impacts of structural inequality. Now, by no means does this policy do everything, but what this is is an opportunity for us to level up and move forward. And I hope that everyone who is watching really takes um, an opportunity um, to not just get themselves informed, but those in their networks and those in their families and communities because we need as many people um, to sign up as possible. And folks know that this is not a scam. I know usually you're used to government asking for money or taking something. This is actually proving government can work when it serves and invests in people, but we need people to take advantage of it. So again, file, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your cousins, do not leave any dollar on the table and let's build back better. Let's build back together. And thank you to the Economic Security Project, Color of Change, um, Community Change, Marriage Security Income, all the sponsors for the work. And it's just beginning. This is an incredible first step. So great to be with you, brother, and looking forward to the road ahead. Um, and so excited uh, for all the speakers today and all the work that's going to happen to ensure that we get real uh, dollars, real resources in the families' pockets that need it the most. I'm going to sign up right now. Let me. All right. <laughs> to my fellow parents out there, check your bank accounts. Monthly payments started going out on July 15th as part of the new child tax credit. These are direct cash payments from the federal government, about $250 per child every month. And there are no limits on what you can spend it on. Child care, rent, college savings, pizza night, whatever is best for your family. I swear this is real life. If you filed taxes or got a stimulus check, you can just sit tight. The check is on the way either in the mail or via direct deposit. But, and this is the important part, if your family doesn't file federal taxes and you didn't get a stimulus check, at any point, you need to go sign up for this program. Go to childtaxcredit.gov right now to make sure you get the money that's set aside for your family. The beautiful thing about this is that it's designed to help everyone if you're a working family struggling with basic needs like rent and bills, a little support every month goes a long way. For middle class families that need help affording childcare or saving for college, this helps with that too. It'll help parents get back to work or take on more hours on the job. The research suggests that the child tax credit has the power to cut child poverty in half, dramatically reducing the racial disparities, ensuring that the economic recovery is felt by all families, not just those at the top. This is life-changing, country-changing stuff, and everyone needs to know about it. But they don't, not yet. Only half of eligible families have heard about this program. That's why my friends at the Economic Security Project and Community Change asked me to speak up and get the word out. So here I am, and you can help me out. Tell the parents you know to make sure they're getting these monthly payments and go to childtaxcredit.gov to learn more. God bless. Peace. Oh, oh, sorry. I was just texting my sister to make sure that she knew about this. Look, Dorian, the reason I love hanging out with you is what? We're like 15 minutes in and already we've had Rashad Robinson, master of structural analysis and a leader of one of the most effective racial justice organizations working today. We've had Michael Tubbs, who pioneered guaranteed income when he was mayor of Stockton, California. And I'm sorry, I don't think I knew we was going to have <laughs> RG3. So I am hyped. <laughs> I hear you, Melissa. And of course, you know, both of us are enthusiastic about the child tax credit because nearly all families will receive about $250 per month per child to use in whatever ways they need. And these, as we know, because we're both parents, these are resources that help families breathe a little easier and sleep a little sounder. And as you know, Melissa, I'm the father of a nine month old, so I care a lot about sleep these days. And I'm definitely supportive of anything that helps parents to get a little more rest. So this is actually a good time, speaking of parents, to hear from some parents. 
I'm going to let you introduce our next special guest, and then we're going to hand it over to Kristen Rowe Finkbeiner from Moms Rising. And Kristen's talking with some of her members about just how meaningful the child tax credit is for them. And I cannot wait to hear their stories. But first, we're going to hear from a mom. Actually, she's also a grandmom. I know you're going to recognize her because she's a lifelong advocate for children and for families. She was first lady, senator, secretary of state, presidential candidate. She's been known to smash a glass ceiling here and there. All around badass, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Hi, everyone. I want to talk about something that will directly affect 39 million families with kids here in the U.S., the new child tax credit. Starting July 15th of this year, the federal government will be sending payments of up to $300 per child directly to families. There are no strings attached and no restrictions on how you can spend it. This is money that parents can use however you see fit. Simple as that. And here's how you can get it. If your family files federal taxes or if you received a stimulus check during the pandemic, these payments will be automatic. They'll be mailed to your home or deposited directly into your bank account. But here's the part that I want everybody to know. If your family doesn't file federal taxes or you didn't get a stimulus check, you need to sign up to receive this money. The process is fast and easy. Just go to childtaxcredit.gov, childtaxcredit.gov. You know, I've spent a lot of time advocating for kids and families, and I am so excited that the Biden-Harris administration is putting families front and center and trying to help you take care of your kids. $300 a month can go a really long way. And the child tax credit will be an important step in helping your family succeed, helping parents get back to work. In fact, experts believe it will cut child poverty in half. This is a really big deal, and I'm asking for your help to spread the word. Text a parent that you know right now and tell them to visit childtaxcredit.gov today. Thank you, Dorian, for the introduction and for hosting today. Moms Rising is excited to be here and co-sponsoring with the Economic Security Project, Building Back Together, and many others. We're an organization of over a million members who are speaking out, sharing our stories, raising our voices to members of Congress and more to expand the child tax credit and to help build a nation where everyone can thrive. Today, we're going to hear from Moms Rising volunteer leaders, Nora, Marybeth, Jules, and Daniela, who are on the leading edge of change. Starting with Nora, thank you for being on. Thank you for joining us. And Nora, what's the best quick advocacy tip that you have for people who are wondering how they can make a difference? And can you also share your personal insights on the impact of the child tax credit increase? Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. So I, I really think that, you know, having conversations, you know, reaching out to people, creating bonds, letting people know what your experience has been. Surprisingly, you'll find out that so many people are experiencing so much of the same right now and our, um, our struggles will bond us. Um, and I think it's important, you know, to recognize the importance of this child tax credit and being such a, a huge uh, fundamental change in the way, you know, policy affects the individual. Um, you know, I am definitely going to benefit and uh, be uh, I'm swapping childcare with a good friend to make sure that she can get out of the house and start making the income she needs. Um, she has a child who's recovering from a brain tumor. And for me, it's also making sure that I can get out of the house and, you know, make the income so that I can provide, you know, the services that my son needs because we both have special needs children. And it's, it's, it's going to make a huge impact on allowing him to also attend virtual school for another year, which has made a huge difference in his educational experience and confidence. So we're really excited and optimistic about it and very thankful that this opportunity has come about. Thank you, Nora. Now to Mary Beth. Thank you for being on with us too. What's your best advocacy tip? And can you also share insight on what the expanded child tax credit will mean to families like yours and the grandchildren you support? Hello, and thank you. Um, the child tax credit that we'll be getting is going to be a huge help to my family. 
I'm raising grandkids and it will help me get basic necessities like school clothes and school supplies for them. Also, the upkeep of a car so we can get where we need to be. We, I, I, I would just say, in my opinion, the best thing to do is speak out. Even if you just speak to one person, you're going to make a change. Please continue to do that. This, we have struggled through the pandemic with not having reliable transportation to get to the food pantries and the soup kitchens. We have been unemployed since the pandemic hit, just like Nura. It's hard to find a job in our area because they can't work with my schedule. This child tax credit means everything to my family. We need it along with other families in our area. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary Beth, for your advocacy, for building change, for sharing your story, and welcome, Jules. The first question is, do you have a top advocacy tip to share? You've also played a role in making major change. And then, of course, there's the other important question of the expanded CTC is set to expire in December. Do you think working families like yours across the country would benefit if it was permanent? Hi, yes. My top advocacy tip is to find something that you're very passionate about because policy change takes time. Back in 2019, I started working on uh, expand, helping to expand the child tax credit with Moms Rising. And two years later, <laughs> we're seeing it. Um, my family is definitely going to benefit from this uh, expansion of the child tax credit. And I think that it would be great to have it not temporary to have it permanent because thinking of how we're going to use it for daycare is going to be, or childcare is going to be excellent for our family. But when our son was born, this would have been a lifesaver with his insurance through the marketplace. So I'm excited that this is happening and I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jules. And welcome to Daniela. What have moms like you been doing to fight for this policy? And why is this such an important moment for your families and others that everyone who's watching should know about? Thank you, Kristen. And thank you to all the moms that have worked hard and that are sharing their stories here. Nara, Mary Beth, and Jules. I started talking to moms in my community and I knew right away that I wasn't the only one that was pushed out of a job because of lack of childcare. We were already struggling before the pandemic. And when it hit, it just highlighted the difficulties that we were going through. And with the support of Moms Rising, I was very fortunate to be able to share my story and talk about how difficult it was for our family to be able to work and take care of our three kids. And I was able to speak on radio, TV, w with Congress and uh, major print media to highlight how important it is for families to have financial uh, relief and be able to be good parents to our young rising leaders. Uh, just this year, because of the expanded child tax credit, my kids will actually be able to attend a few weeks of summer camp, which was something that we never were able to do before. And when fall comes, our youngest uh, will be able to have preschool five days a week, which is something we ne were never able to do with our older two, which means that I'll be able to work consistently throughout uh, the week. So I really do hope that uh, our policymakers are able to see how crucial this is to our economy and expand this beyond December, uh, which will be a huge win. So thank you so much. Thank you to Nara, to Mary Beth, to Jules, and Daniela. Thank you to everyone who's watching, listening, taking action, raising your voice, sharing your story, leading the way forward. Like many organizations, Moms Rising has a summer of activity coming up aimed at helping to get the word out about the child tax credit and building the care infrastructure that we all need. This is a historic moment when 50% of all children in the United States of America could be lifted out of poverty if we all access the child tax credit. So we need to get the word out. We need to share with our friends, families, and neighbors. And we need to write our members of Congress and share our stories about how the child tax credit helps us with them so they keep up the fight as well. 
You can come to MomsRising.org to share your story, to take action, and to get involved. And you can do that with many other organizations that are on here today as well. One thing is clear. Together, we can get out the word about the child tax credit, and we can lift all families if we all keep working for the change we need. We are an incredibly powerful force. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen, and all the members of Moms Rising. The organization's goal is simple, but important. Moms Rising is committed to building a more family-friendly America, and that is a big part of what the child tax credit does. So listen, we want to invite you to tell your story as well. If you're watching us on the Markham Live backslash child tax credit link, click the link below to share your story on what the child tax credit means for you. And if you joined us on Facebook Live, share your story, tag a parent. Let me say that again. Tag a parent in the comments below so they can share their story. And if you're just joining us for this incredible event, we want to remind you we have a very special guest coming up, a guest who spends a lot of time hanging out in the White House. That's right, Vice President Kamala Harris. So tag or message all of your Facebook friends and tell them to tune in as well. Okay, Melissa, I actually have a surprise guest for you up next. You ready? Wait. Dorian, is Beyonce here? <laughs> well, in a way, in a way, because up next, Melissa, we're going to hear from Senator Elizabeth Warren. And while she not, she, she's not a mega performer like Beyonce, she is a rock star of structural change, of economic fairness, of supporting families. So Senator Warren, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Dorian, for that introduction. I am so glad to be with all of you today at the Child Tax Credit Virtual Rally. I want to thank the Economic Security Project and Building Back Together for inviting me to be part of celebrating the arrival of the Child Tax Credit payments. Woohoo! I also want to give a special shout out to Moms Rising, Color of Change, Community Change, the Care Can't Wait Coalition, and the United State of Women for co-sponsoring today's event. But most of all, thank you for your powerful work to get us here. Back in March, Democrats passed an historic relief package to provide meaningful, sustained support to families. That package focused on getting dollars into families' bank accounts. And one of the biggest ways we did that is to expand the child tax credit. We increased the maximum child credit amount by about $1,600. We expanded the credit to cover 17-year-olds. And for the first time ever, we structured the credit so that families can get the money monthly and automatically. And that means a check every month for eligible families. You know, this change is the right thing to do. And it just makes sense. Families working hard to support their kids don't pay for diapers or clothing just once a year. They pay those expenses every single month. So this tax credit should come every month as well. I know so many people here fought so long and so hard to get this historic expansion. Thank you all. Here's the important work though that we need to do now. We need to make sure that every eligible family who wants advance payments is signed up to receive them, especially the families who don't need to file a tax return. The IRS has a portal for those families to sign up for the advance credits. Let's make sure we're supporting eligible families using that tool to get the credit. But keep in mind, this fight isn't over. The child tax credit has only been expanded for one year. I'm going to continue to fight with every tool in the toolbox to make these changes permanent because no family and no child should ever be left behind in our economy. I also won't stop fighting to ensure that we get much needed funding for child care. Universal child care is critical to our economy and to our economic recovery. 
And that's why I've been fighting for at least $700 billion as part of the infrastructure package for families. I am proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with each one of you in these fights. And I'm going to pass this back to Dorian. Under the new child tax credit, checks start going out July 15th. And so for parents with kids under 18, these direct monthly payments of about $250 per child can be a game changer. So I want to take a minute to make sure that everyone knows how to get their checks. If your family has recently filed federal taxes or received a stimulus check, these payments are automatic. They're sent to you in the mail or via direct deposit. But for non-filers out there, and I know you're out there, that is any family that doesn't file federal taxes and didn't receive a stimulus check, there's still money out there for you. There is. But you need to go sign up for it. You just have to sign up. The good news is that part is really easy. You just go to childtaxcredit.gov and click on the non-filer sign up button. The only information you need to give is your full name, your current mailing address, your email address, your date of birth, and a taxpayer ID or a social security number for you and your dependents. The new child tax credit is built to help all families succeed because $250 a month is a welcome boost no matter whether your family struggles with basic needs like food or rent or whether you just need help paying for childcare, and I know we all need that, or saving for college. So support like this each and every month, it will go a long way. We'll help parents go back to work or even increase their hours. And when families get this help, a lot of researchers are saying that it will reduce racial disparities and cut child poverty in half, in half. Like I said, it is a game changer. And right now, it's all about spreading the word. So reach out to the parents you know and tell them there is money out there waiting for them. And all they have to do is go to childtaxcredit.gov to learn more about how to get it. So I have this crown on because I, Jim Poo, and Senator Elizabeth Warren are queens. Listen, thank you to both of you, not only for being here today, but for decades of structural work that you have done to help our nation's families. Now, the child tax credit is exactly that kind of structural change. It is cash up to $300 per child per month no strings attached. And most of you are just gonna receive these funds directly into your bank account, many of them starting today. And I'm gonna encourage you, go check your account, see if it's in there. But just as I just said, if you are one of those families that hasn't filed taxes, it doesn't need to file taxes, go and sign up at childtaxcredit.gov. Well, actually, Don't go yet. Wait until the end of our program because we have some amazing guests still coming up, including Vice President Kamala Harris. Great guests for sure, Melissa. And we're definitely gonna hear more from parents and families from all around America. And soon we're gonna see how artists and activists are celebrating the child tax credit, including those taking TikTok by storm. But but before, before we get to TikTok and what's hot on TikTok, We have the honor to be joined by Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Dorian, for your kind introduction. I also want to thank the Economic Security Project, Building Back Together, and their partners for coming together today to celebrate this historic occasion. Thank you for all the work you are doing each day every day to improve the lives of millions of American families. The expanded child tax credit could not come at a more critical time. Right now, too many American children and their families are living in poverty and they need our help. Childhood should be a time of hope and possibility, not worry and despair. And yet far too many families are struggling to put enough food on the table or gas in the tank. 
far too many families have to choose between buying school supplies and clothes of fit, between staying healthy or getting a paycheck. This is personal for me. I've lived these struggles firsthand. Growing up, I was one of four children born to immigrant parents who taught me the values of working hard and opening the doors of opportunity. My mother was a clerical worker, my dad a laborer, whether canning tomatoes, fixing railroad cars, or working construction. We never had much, but we always worked our way through. That's why I'm proud the Biden-Harris administration is taking a whole of government approach to ending child poverty. And our team at HHS is helping lead the way. Through the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families program, we work with states to help provide children from low-income families with the basic resources they need. Through our Social Services Block Grant program, HHS helps protect children and adults from neglect, abuse, and exploitation. And HHS has been vital to our nation's COVID-19 response efforts, releasing nearly $1 billion in much-needed relief through our Pandemic Emergency Assistance Fund. But we need to do more. That's why the American Rescue Plan expanded the child tax credit, giving direct relief to roughly 39 million households. This expansion will complement and build on our efforts by giving families the support they need during these trying times. In fact, according to a study by Columbia University, the American Rescue Plan is projected to cut child poverty by more than half. We're at a pivotal moment in our nation's history. As we recover from this unprecedented pandemic, we can maintain the status quo or we can build back better. And we can build a stronger foundation for the next generation, our children. HHS, the Economic Security Project, and Building Back Together will be critical to these efforts. You know, HHS is aptly named. You can't separate health from humanity. If we lead with our humanity, there's nothing we can't do for the American people. That's how we struck a new deal and charted a new frontier. It's how we built a great society and survived a Great Depression. In those moments of crisis, our leaders took a whole-of-government approach. They didn't skirt around the edges. They went all in. That's what the Biden-Harris administration is doing. The child tax credit is a game changer. And we want all of you in this game with us. There are millions of Americans counting on us. So let's get to work. Hi, Mrs. Yuka here with my son Watson. Hi, say hi. Hi. So, all families look different. Mine looks a little different too, but guess what? We all have one thing in common. We could all use a little extra financial help from time to time, but you're in luck. On July 15th, the National Expanded Child Tax Credit will be in full effect. That's right, you can expect on July 15th, $250 per child in your bank account each month. How exciting is that? Is that exciting? Yes, dance party! Woohoo! Okay, 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 okay. But, but, <laughs> do some research because maybe this is tax credit and isn't something that your family needs or something that you want to opt out of. You can. Just go online, do a little research, and you still have time to opt out of the August payment. But starting July 15th, check those bank accounts and don't forget to spread the news. Help is on the way! Yay! <laughs> Bye! I know you're struggling to raise these kids during this panty. No. So you know what the government's actually doing? They're giving you money to help raise your kids. It's called the Child Tax Credit, and if you have a kid between the ages of 0 and 5, you can earn up to $3,600 per kid. And if you have a kid between the ages of 6 and 17, girl, that's $3,000. And in order to qualify for that, if you filed single on your taxis, then you'll have to make less than $75,000 per year. If you filed head of household, you'll need to be able to make less than $115,000 a year. And if you filed under married, you'll need to be able to make less than $150,000 per year. Now, if you guys must know that this is a limited time thing, and if we want this to be implemented in like the norm for um, Americans who are having children, then you need to go on to the community change action page here on TikTok. I'm gonna tag them below because we besties and we need a rally behind this. If you want more information, everything like that, the community change action page here. Guess how many children are being lifted out of poverty thanks to the child tax credit? 4.1 million. 4.1 million.
could get more money to raise our kids. I'm struggling to get by just raising little Johnny. Excuse me, did I hear you say you're struggling to get by raising your child monetarily? Yes, I only have a four-year-old son and we've been really struggling to make ends meet. Is there any way that you can help? Well, actually we can. With the new child tax credit that the government is implementing, you can actually get money for that. If you have a child zero to five years old, you can get up to $3,600. And if your kid's six to 17 years old, you can get up to $3,000. So the government is gonna be giving you money to help support your children. Oh my God, that is so amazing. Is there any requirements or stipulations at all for this? Yes, there are. If you filed single, you have to make under $75,000 a year. If you filed head of household, under $115,000 and married under $150,000. Wow, thank you so much. This is gonna change our lives. I just have to know, Dorian, are you on TikTok? Uh, yes. No, I, I don't know what the right answer. I'm getting on it now, Melissa. I'm getting on right now. <laughs> I'm so inspired by those TikTok videos. Like, for real. So this summer, I'm, I'm guest hosting The Takeaway on WNYC Public Radio. And for one of the segments, my teenager, you know, she helped me to actually create a TikTok account. But then she changed the password because she was like, you ain't going to be twerking up in there. That's not Is okay. That that's a team for you, Melissa. That's a team for you. <laughs> now, I might not be allowed to twerk on TikTok, but I was thinking maybe I could make like a, you know, chopping child poverty in half kind of thing. Maybe. I don't know. I might not quite understand TikTok. <laughs> but what I will say, it's just watching those TikTokers. It was such a, you know, inspiration, that notion that you can use a social media platform to really advocate and to uplift and to amplify something as important as this. Yeah, Melissa, it's actually how we're using this platform today because we have to help spread the word and make sure that the child tax credit reaches every eligible family. And let's be real, real talk for a minute. We know all too well that social media can be a site of disinformation. So we're gonna work hard with all of you to make sure you have the real information you need. So take a moment to tag a parent below to help us spread the word. And of course, Melissa, um, it's been a rough year. We've all it been is. through a lot this past year and every parent should have the ability to provide and care for their families, whether they're out of work or just getting back to work because of the pandemic. So I'm going to actually hand it over to Sarah Nelson, president of the Association of Flight Attendants. And she is here with two of her members to talk to us a little bit about why the CTC is more important than ever for them post-COVID. Good afternoon, my good friends, Jessica and Jaime. Um, so we're going to talk about the child tax credit today. And I think that this is really important. Um, um, to recognize what we did as AFA members in pushing for the American Rescue Plan. And uh, we not only saved jobs with the payroll support program, but we did something that also makes me think about what we have done throughout the course of our careers in our union, in making it possible for flight attendants to have this job with children. And today, <laughs> today, our, it's not just a job, it's a career. And we have a lot of AFA members who have children. And so I think the two of you are very representative of that. And let's make sure that every single AFA member and every single worker out there really understands what this is and takes full advantage of this program. Um, so it, first of all, uh, um, let's hear from the two of you. Introduce yourselves and um, tell us uh, your name and uh, generally the work you do and how long you've been a flight attendant. So Sarah, I guess I'll start. Good to see you today. Um, my name is Jessica McKee Trujillo. I am a 16-year flight attendant at a major airline. And Jessica, how many kids do you have? I have two kids. Um, one is six and one is eight. Boy and girl. Okay. Okay. So one of them qualifies for $300 a month <laughs> every month between now and the end of the year and the other one for $250. Um, and so that's going to be over $500 a month. Oh my gosh. We're going to get back to that. Jaime? Tell us about you. 
Hi, I'm Jaime. I'm a flight attendant with the regional airline, and I've been a, a flight attendant uh, for 17 years. And how many kids do you have at home? I have a total of seven kids at home, four <laughs> my own and three adopted. Oh, my gosh. Crazy house. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me just, I didn't know it was that many. All right, <laughs> let me let me just beg, bow down to you now. That is amazing. Um, and you're a full-time flight attendant and union activist. And a second part-time job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's break this down because um, this is a real game changer this year, right, Jaime? I mean, uh, uh, how, how much is that that, that your family is going to be getting each month? I, I haven't done the math, but it, it is a substantial income, but it, it, it helps my family, you know, where maybe I could cut back on my second job, be yeah. able to home because you know being a flight attendant you're away from your home four or five nights a week where you're not sleeping in your bed you're you're missing the the band practices the you know the band games the cheer cheerleading competitions and it you know it, it just helps to me being able to cut back my hours and even if it's just temporary to to be with my kids those those one-time moments that only happens once you know and and it's just it's important to me family's huge and to, to be well, able to Activities. And also, Jaime, let me just ask you this. I mean, it, it sounds like you work overtime hours in your job as a flight attendant, and you also work a second job to try to make ends meet. And yeah. so, <laughs> you know, what is, and, and how has it been for you through coronavirus? Because you couldn't work those overtime hours either. So um, did, your, did your family get, behind, is this going to help you get caught up? What is this going to mean for you? It's going to help me catch up. You know, we, I think most flight attendants, well, I can't say most, but a lot of flight attendants did take, you know, 401k loans to make ends meet during the COVID yeah. virus. You know, both of my jobs were non-existent pretty much with ours because of COVID. So this will help me catch up on, you know, those, uh, those loans that, you know, flight attendants had to take out to, to just make ends meet. Yeah. So I couldn't do the math in my fa in my head fast enough. And plus, I don't know how old all the kids are in Jaime's house. But Jessica, I could do the math in my head with your two kids. <laughs> so $550 a month for the end of the year. And then uh, the the um, payment that you'll get with your, when you file your taxes next year. Um, what kind of a difference is that going to make for you in your home? So both my husband and I are, are both flight attendants and it has taken a huge hit on our income and, and our savings. We've had to take out our savings and we've had to really cut back. And this is going to help tremendously. Uh, we've already decided that we are going to put that money um, first and foremost toward tutoring because our kids were out of school for mm. the entire year, um, mm. except for one month. And so as hard as we tried, uh, you know, my husband and I were very adamant about education and schooling, and we were very regimented, but, you know, we want them to be up to par and we want them to not only be up to par, but we want them to be exceeding. And it's so important for us to be able to afford that. It's something that we really struggled with and we had to cut back on other things to be able to provide the tutoring for our kids during the pandemic. Um, so it's really, really going to help us. It's going to help um, make our savings bigger again. Um, and so it's going to help with, with different things like food and mortgage. And, you know, there have been a substantial increase in the cost of raising children over the past couple of years. And with clothing going up and food and tutoring and healthcare, this is just going to help our family so much. And we are so thankful for it. <laughs> Good. Well, just imagine if this were permanent, uh, what a difference it could make in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you both so much for sharing your personal experiences. And um, I, I just, uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that everybody knows how to take advantage of this and um, fully use it. Because I know that we have uh, flight attendants across the system who are really going to benefit from this and really need this. So um, thank you so much, Jessica and Jaime, and um, cheers to your families and to your kids. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hola, mi nombre es Lisa Chacón, soy la directora ejecutiva de la Alianza del Pueblo en Colorado y la presidenta de la Junta Directiva de la Acción del Pueblo, conocida en inglés como People's Actions. En Colorado hemos trabajado mucho con otros grupos para apoyar a nuestras familias a expandir este tipo de crédito y estamos emocionados de la oportunidad que tenemos en todo el país ahorita. People's Action trabajó con sus afiliados alrededor del país, desde Los Ángeles hasta Maine, de Indiana hasta New Hampshire, para hacer estos cambios en apoyo a nuestras comunidades y para elevar la importancia del crédito tributario por hijos, porque esta es una de las políticas públicas que puede transformar la vida de muchas de nuestras familias. Este crédito puede elevar al 50% de nuestras familias fuera de la pobreza en este país. Es algo tan importante y que ha sido necesario desde hace mucho tiempo, algo que hemos luchado mucho por obtener por años. En un país tan rico como los Estados Unidos, tenemos que cuidar a nuestras familias y a los niños. Quiero explicar qué es el crédito y cómo las familias pueden recibirlo. Hay mucha información en el sitio de internet www.childtaxcredit.gov. Haga clic en el botón que dice en español. Las familias recibirán entre 250 y 300 dólares, depende de la edad de su hijo, por hijo, por mes, por un año, empezando el día de hoy. Y los que no han hecho los impuestos son elegibles también. Todavía usted califica. Solamente necesitan tomar algunos pasos fáciles para actualizar su información con el servicio de impuestos internos. Vaya al www.childtaxcredit.gov y haga clic en el botón para no contribuyente registrante. La mayoría de la gente recibirá los pagos del crédito tributario por hijos automáticamente. Si recibieron sus impuestos o cheques de estímulo en depósito directo, recibirán este en la misma manera empezando hoy, el 15 de julio. Si no tienen una cuenta de banco o no tienen depósito directo con el servicio de impuestos internos, recibirán los fondos por un cheque de papel o una tarjeta de débito. El crédito tributario por hijos no va a afectar otros beneficios federales que esté recibiendo como el desempleo, seguro de enfermedad Medicaid, SNAP, seguro social, disabilidad, asistencia pública, WIC o sección 8 de vivienda pública. No va a afectar ninguno de sus beneficios. Es un crédito de impuestos, no es ingreso. No causará que su renta suba de precio o que se deduzcan otros beneficios que tenga. Esto es una gran oportunidad para nuestras familias. Asegurémonos de que todos los elegibles reciban este beneficio. On July 15th, something absolutely amazing is going to happen. Countless families across Georgia and the nation will begin receiving their first enhanced child tax credit from the American Rescue Plan. Let me be clear. This tax cut for working families is a game changer for hardworking Georgians who stand to receive up to $300 per child per month, especially as we work to get our economy back on track following a once in a century pandemic. This money will help so many working parents provide additional support to their children and help their families not only to survive, but to thrive. Starting today, The expanded child tax credit will make a tremendous difference in the lives of, of over 2 million Georgia children. And that's why I was proud to champion this tax cut. Speaking on the Senate floor to remind Americans that when you help hardworking Georgia families, you know, they buy things like food, baby diapers, a coat for their kid. And it helps not only them, it helps the American economy. As a pastor, these are people I know. These are my neighbors and your neighbors. And that's why I was proud when we passed this provision in the United States Senate as part of the American Rescue Plan. This will effectively slash childhood poverty in half across our nation. I've spoken to many of our Senate colleagues and my colleagues have remarked to me, those who've been here a long time, that this is some of the most landmark legislation that they have ever seen passed through this chamber in at least two decades. And we shouldn't stop there. I'm going to keep fighting to make these tax credits permanent. Congress has an opportunity to eradicate childhood poverty in the richest nation 
on the planet and we must not let, let it slip away. We must make necessary investments in our children because they are the future of Georgia and this nation. And in a country like the United States, a parent's income should not determine a child's outcome. So thanks to everyone who worked to make this day possible and know that I've got your back in the Senate and in this fight. Keep the faith and keep looking up. Thank you, Senator. And in case you missed it, that's Senator Warnock from Georgia. See, I want to go back just a, a little bit to one of our earlier guests who um, were the flight attendants. And Jamie was talking about having seven kids. And it got me thinking a little bit, Dorian, about big families. I'm the youngest of five. My mm -hmm. mom is from a family of five. My dad's from a family of five. And they're both first gen college students. And I'm just thinking about like, Growing up in working class families, how much every single dollar makes a big difference. So <laughs> I know the math is hard, but I did just do the math in my head. And $250 per kid with seven kids means that in Jamie's family, this could be $1,750 every month, which should okay. just about mm -hmm. cover laundry detergent. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I want to be clear that there's a lot of work, as you heard from, from Senator Warnock, there are a lot of people, a lot of work that went into this. So let me just go ahead and name check some of those 50 local, state, and national organizations, People's Action, Income Movement, Humanity Forward, the Children's Defense Fund, Children's Health Watch, Common Sense Media, Moms Rising. And Dorian, wasn't community change involved? <laughs> we have a little something to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that name check, Melissa. <laughs> so everybody, do not go away. We've still got some great guests, including Vice President Kamala Harris. But up next, we're going to be joined first by two progressive fighters, Adi Barkin of Be a Hero and Jess morales Rocato of the National Domestic Workers Alliance. Thank you for having me join this celebration. It is a celebration of the meaningful change that the increased child tax credit is going to have for so many American families this year. And it is also a celebration of the leadership and the vision of the elected officials of the Democratic Party, who have held the entire Congressional Caucus together to pass this legislation. But, most of all, let today be a celebration of the progressive movement. Forty years ago, Ronald Reagan rose to the presidency by vilifying mothers, especially black mothers. His racist formula said that the biggest problem in America was government giving white people's dollars to poor black people, and his solution was to champion so-called family values by discriminating against queer people and putting women back in their proper place. Thirty years ago, Democrats responded by embracing Reagan's worldview and rhetoric. The era of big government is over. Bill Clinton said, as he eviscerated what remained of federal aid to families with children. While the child tax credit was born under his presidency, it didn't go nearly far enough to provide the necessary relief that families need. But today we celebrate the end of the Reagan revolution and the end of that cynical, neoliberal Democratic Party. Thanks to the progressive organizers and activists and policy wonks, we are building a new political paradigm which is to say that we are returning to an older and better vision of our society, our government, and ourselves. We are proud of what we can do together, what our government can do, to make life better for ourselves and our people. We are proud to say that there are many things that we can do together, that we cannot do alone. We have much to celebrate today, and much more to achieve. Will this be the dawning of a new era, with many more victories to come? That depends upon the choices that we here make, the work that we decide to do. This year, and in the 40 years to come, I am grateful and honored to be in the struggle with you. Hey there, my name is Jess morales Riquetto. I'm from the National Domestic Workers Alliance, and I'm so honored to be joined by Kara. Kara, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kara, I'm also known as Calypso. I am a domestic worker in Houston, Texas area. Um, I'm a proud member of the We Driven Black chapter. 
That's awesome, Kara. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, we found out before this that we have uh, Houston in common, and um, I know that you all were hit really hard by, by the pandemic. Um, you, you said you were a domestic worker. Um, what kind of domestic work do you do? Are you a house cleaner, elder care worker, or a nanny? Um, I'm a house cleaner. How long have you been a house cleaner for? I've been a house cleaner for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay. Okay. We sometimes hear from people who've been doing it for like 20 years, which I can't imagine saying at any job for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't either. I couldn't either. Um, can you tell me about uh, house cleaning. Have you been able to clean houses during the pandemic? Um, I have not been able to clean as much as I would pre-pandemic. Um, the houses that we had to, that we have cleaned, um, people aren't taking like precautions with us in their house, so it makes it harder to service. Um, we've had to turn away several clients because they they don't want to work with PE or they want to sit in the same room with you. And it's almost like, you know, uh, social distancing measures don't count in people's houses. So. Yeah, except COVID doesn't really care where your house is. It still uh, can pass through even on your own countertops or your own table. That's really scary. Uh, I wouldn't want to go to work under that circumstances either. You know, we've heard from a lot of people. Um, house cleaners and elder care workers and nannies that work went way down in the pandemic. Um, and that sadly, that same thing you just said that lots of people didn't wear their PPE. And so they weren't able to work. Um, were you able to work? Uh, like, uh, are your hours back up to where they were before the pandemic yet? Or are you still kind of behind on hours? Still kind of behind on hours. Um, a whole lot slower than it was pre pandemic. I mean, it's picked up, but then you also people don't want to, abide by you know social distancing turns out pandemic's still not over yet you can still get covid um that's really uh that's really scary uh i know that for a lot of people they were you know obviously not being able to work is a real financial hardship and it created some challenges but um i don't know about you but i was really looking forward to um, I wish I had kids, frankly, so that I could get the child care tax credit, but I did really look forward to my stimulus check. I know you have kids though. Can you tell me a little bit about your children? So I have two kids. Um, my firstborn is Ivy. She's six. And my second is Isaiah. He's five. So they'll five be starting uh, kindergarten and second grade. So come here. Oh my goodness. Are they going back to school in person? They are. Um, their school uh, took a lot of precautions last year, and we had limited um, periods of quarantine. I think they've only had to quarantine like two times the whole school year. Um, they went back early September last year. Tell me a little bit about them. What do they like to do? They like to dance. They like to um, I had them in karate, and they were so good seeing them <laughs> with their little eyes and kicks and stuff like that um they like to read uh, my kids are really interested in space and nasa so housekeeping is allowing me to kind of push them into that that's awesome i mean houston you kind of can't escape space and nasa so that makes sense um i know that uh you know i can hear the love that you have for your kids in your voice when you were just talking like you just lit up it was really beautiful to see um but it's i bet the pandemic kind of made things a little bit harder not as much um money coming in not as much work not being able to leave your house um and i know that you are one of the recipients of the child care tax credit um and that was a really big lifeline that President Biden and President, uh, Vice President Harris um, made sure, you know, came forward for our families. A little bit of extra check when, you know, things are, are getting tough. Um, was the child care tax credit really helpful for your family? It was really helpful. Um, at the time, our, our rent was a whole lot cheaper. Um, so I was able to take that tax credit and pay up our rent to make sure we had somewhere to stay until I could get back to work. Um, wow. The, <laughs> that, well, that certainly is very important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we definitely need people, uh, you know, I feel like nobody should really have to be worrying about paying up rent during this time when no one can work. But in the absence of um, forgiving rent, that is a really important thing that that did. That's I'm so glad to hear that. 
Um, what do you think, you know, what's something that you want people to know about getting checks like this? Like, you know, some, some folks feel like you shouldn't be able to get help like this. People feel like, um, you know, you should just kind of make it work. What do you think when people say that? Um, I think that those people, I guess they have the, the money to get by in different situations like this when most of us are literally living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. So not knowing where your, your, your next check is going to come from because you don't, you're out of work. Um, the tax credit, it, it really helped with that. Um, yeah. I was able to pay up two months rent because at the time my rent was only like $600. So I at least knew um, worst case scenario, we had somewhere to stay. That's so, so important. Thank you so much for sharing that, Karen. I really, really appreciate it. Well, I mean, we only have a few minutes and I think it's pretty clear. Um, Child care tax credit helped care pay her rent and it helps lots of people do really, really important things. It's why it's so important that it's happened and why we need to continue it um, so that children and families can actually support themselves. And that's so the workers in the care economy, people like Kara and millions of domestic workers around the country have just a little bit of help when they need it. Thanks so much to Economic Security Project and everyone who's fighting for a better future in the care economy for us all. Thank you so much, Kara. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So, Melissa, I have a very special guest. Surprise. Yes. <laughs> I love this baby. I want to hug this baby. Your baby is so beautiful. It's ridiculous. Hey, this is, baby. This is my baby girl who is a beneficiary of the child tax credit. And so she's celebrating with us today. She has a little nap. Yeah, you got a little nap that you have to take soon. But <laughs> Melissa, before we hear from the vice president, we're joined by three women who have led the fight for the expansion of the child tax credit for decades. And I'm talking about Congresswoman Susan Del Bene, Barbara Lee, and of course, our longtime CTC champion from Connecticut, Rosa DeLaurel. Each of these women have been indefatigable. I think I got that word right. Crusaders against child poverty. And I know this is personal to them. It's personal to me. It's personal to you, Melissa. And it's personal for so many of you watching from home, too. So let's hear from the Congress. Hi, it's Susan. The historic American Rescue Plan included a one-year expansion of the child tax credit, something that I've pushed for to get relief out to families during this difficult time. Starting in July, nearly 40 million families will begin receiving monthly payments of up to $300 per child through December. But kids don't grow up in a year. We must build on the American Rescue Plan and make the expanded benefit permanent so parents have the predictability they need as they raise their families. The impact of this investment for our children's long-term health, education, and the future of our economy is too important to miss. The permanent child tax credit expansion is estimated to cut child poverty by more than half and will help us rebuild the middle class. With Chairman Neal's leadership, this critical policy is a part of the Building an Economy for Families Act. Let's get this done for our children and our future. Thank you to the Economic Security Project and Building Back Together for hosting today's event. I'm so pleased to be also joined by so many important co-sponsors, including Moms Rising, the Care Can't Wait Coalition, and Move On. Many people don't realize that even before COVID, two out of five people in this country, that's about 140 million of us, were poor or low income, living every day just $400 or less away from financial ruin. And of course, poverty is inextricably bound with America's history of systemic racism and white supremacy. This historic child tax credit that we passed in the American Rescue Plan is but one step toward dismantling poverty in America and ensuring the basic needs of all children are met. The expanded and improved child tax credit is a necessary policy and a lifeline to the middle class that severely cuts child poverty. It provides children and their families with additional payments throughout the year that helps them with the cost of food, childcare, healthcare, clothing, 
and yes, taxes. Experts say the tax credit could lift more than 5 million children out of poverty and cut childhood poverty in America in half, but only if low-income families who don't usually file tax returns are aware of the credit and apply. That is why uh, our outreach, that is why your outreach efforts are so extremely important. In my district alone, an estimated 100,600 children stand to benefit from this credit. It's crucial that we get out the word about this important benefit. While the expanded child tax credit is an important step, our work does not stop here. I look forward to continuing to work alongside the Biden administration to help families recover and build back bolder from this crisis. Let's keep fighting to ensure that all families have access to basic needs. Thank you for the work that you do. Let's keep up the fight. Hi, everyone. This is Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro representing Connecticut's third congressional district. Thank you, Dorian, for those kind words and generous introduction. I also want to thank you and all the members of the Economic Security Project and Building Back Together for hosting and organizing today's event and gathering families from all across America for this virtual rally. Let me also recognize all the folks from Community Change, Moms Rising, Children's Defense Fund, and the National Women's Law Center who are joining us today and all of the countless advocates and local groups and communities across the country who have been anchoring our press conferences, joining our events and sharing their stories about what the child tax credit means to them and to their families. You have all been extraordinary partners in the fight for the child tax credit. And I have been honored to fight side by side with you to implement the gains we made in the American Rescue Plan. This historic change is a lifeline to the middle class still struggling and cuts child poverty by 55%. The first round of child tax credit checks will begin hitting families' bank accounts today. These $250 to $300 checks are critical to helping children and their families with the costs of food, childcare, diapers, health care, and clothing. Poor, working, and middle-class families are receiving the same monthly payments. And these families will feel more secure, better able to deal with the burdensome expenses that face them. The expansion and improvement of the child tax credit that was included in the American Rescue Plan are groundbreaking. But we must make it permanent. Children and families must be able to count on the checks that they will be seeing today long after the end of this pandemic. We cannot cut child poverty by 55% and eliminate extreme child poverty in 2021 and then double child poverty in 2022. That is why our position has been clear. We must make the child tax credit permanent. We have a real opportunity here not to just throw money at a problem, but to build the architecture for the future. Use this as a moment to lift up all children and families so that every person, no matter their background, has the opportunity to contribute and to succeed. So thank you for all of your work, raising awareness and lending your voices to this cause. This is a day worth celebrating, but let it be just the beginning let us keep fighting. Let us make our voices heard because together I know we can and we will make the child tax credit permanent. Hey, look who I found hanging around my house. <laughs> so, <laughs> this little hey. one is, <laughs> this daughter is eligible. She's seven, but this one's gone and grown up. She's a technical adult, 19 years old. No $300 a month for her, but it's all right. It's worth it because family is what it's all about. And this is such a historic day because what we've been hearing is about all of the ways that this child tax credit are going to make a big difference for families, uh, small families, big families all across the country. Melissa, it's so good to see the Harris Perry girls. Hey there. I'm so glad you made the parents on this momentous day. And just to say, Melissa, 
we have all been through so much in this last year, the last couple of years. We've all been through some really difficult times. And we do want to take a pause today because this is a historic moment. And this is history today. So I now have the honor, Melissa, and the privilege of introducing our keynote speaker for today's celebration, a historic figure in her own right, the first woman vice president, the first black woman vice president, the first South Asian woman vice president, a longtime champion of the child tax credit, vice president, Kamala Harris. It's the Hi, everyone. It is an honor to address the Economic Security Project, Building Back Together, and the many organizations that are working together on behalf of America's families. Today is a good day, because today, families across our nation will begin to receive the child tax credit in their bank accounts. And together, we made that happen. You made that happen. On behalf of President Joe Biden and myself, thank you for your support and for your leadership. You know, the IRS estimates that more than 30 million American families will begin to receive monthly checks starting now. Let me say that again. Starting now, more than 30 million American families will begin to receive checks of up to $300 per child each month. That covers every family making $150,000 a year or less. That covers the vast majority of our nation's children. So to borrow a phrase from our president, it's a big deal. With the expansion of the child tax credit, we are supporting our nation's working families. We are strengthening our nation's middle class, and we are helping to lift half of America's children who are living in poverty out of poverty. Just think about that. The impact of that will be historic, seismic even. And it will be felt not only by the children of today, it will be felt by families and communities and by our country for generations to come. And that is something to celebrate. And as we celebrate, let us also remember Our work is not yet finished. We need to make sure American families know about this credit and how they can receive it. And I know you know this, but it bears repeating. If folks file taxes for 2019 or 2020 or a stimulus check, they do not have to do anything. They will get the child tax credit automatically. If they did not file taxes for 2019 or 2020 or a stimulus check, They do have to take action. They need to visit childtaxcredit.gov. I'm going to say that again, childtaxcredit.gov, and fill out a simple form. The president and I need your help to spread the word and to fight to make expansion of the child tax credit permanent. You know, after the president signed the American Rescue Plan into law, I said this, Americans will see what we did here, and they will feel the impact of this bill for generations to come. And that is certainly true. So thank you again for your partnership and for your leadership, and know that the President and I will never stop fighting for our children, for our families, and for our nation. Thank you and take care. Join the party, we'll be the 
Yay, the Chicago Children's Choir. And also such an enormous thank you to Vice President Kamala Harris. Yes, I made my girls stay and listen. Dorian, you're a Chicagoan, right? You know it, Melissa, and I actually am such a big fan of the Chicago Children's Choir. A lot, a lot of my lifelong friends were in that choir growing up. And, you know, those kids are all going to benefit from the child tax credit. So let me start to wrap us up, Melissa, and say thank you to the vice president. Thank you to Secretary Hillary Clinton, Secretary Javier Becerra, the senators and representatives that took the time to join us. And of course, all of the parents, the families, the advocates, the organizers who are leading the way. We are grateful for you and appreciate the work you do. And of course, to all of you who tuned in for this amazing celebration of the child tax credit. If you haven't tagged a parent in the comments below, please do it now because even if you wanna text some parents, it's important that you tell everybody you can because each of you and each of us are trusted messengers in our own families and communities. So spread the word, spread the word. And again, thank you for tuning in to Family Matters, a virtual celebration of the child tax credit. That's right. And don't forget, if you need to sign up and you haven't, go to childtaxcredit.gov. <laughs> childtaxcredit.gov. Remember, payments start today. Is there a better sentence in the world? Payments start today. They're going <laughs> to land in your bank accounts um, on the 15th of each month. And you should truly let people know. If you tell anybody anything about any topic over the course of the next few days, Tell them about the child tax credit. Dorian, it is always such a pleasure <laughs> to be with you. Thank you for uh, in, uh, including me in this incredible day. Uh, Melissa, we've been doing this together a very long time. So thank you for joining me in this amazing <laughs> celebration um, to be continued. And everybody, your family matters. Your family matters. Your kids matter. On behalf of the Economic Security Project and Building Back Together, and all of our co-sponsors, thank you again for spending your afternoons with us. Be well, and we'll see you soon. Be well.